Get up, stop slouching, breathe. Let's wash the dirt and muck off ourselves. Here's some quick reminders about the state of humanity. And you might think you know what the state of humanity is, but the biggest mistake in our lives practically is forgetting that terrible truth in every moment. And we forget this because we have a false idea about awakening and what spiritual awakening really is. We've frankly been lied to about awakening, not so much from malevolent beings or groups, but from our own ignorance. So then, what is awakening? And to arrive at that answer, we first have to negate what is not awakening. Only then are we better able to let the mind find out what real awakening is. And I'll list some of them below now. And as you listen, reflect on whether you have made some of these mistakes yourself. Because the fact is, at least 90% of you listening have made these mistakes, whether in the past or now. And that's okay. We're all learning, right? So firstly, stop imagining what awakening feels like. That's the first mistake we've all already made. To stop imagining what it must be like to be an awakened person. Stop thinking that you should be this or that way because you read this or that or because you saw a spiritual teacher do this or that. Awakening is not about becoming something. Awakening is not about ambition. Awakening is not about becoming more. See how monstrous the spiritual ego is. More, more, I want more, I want powers, I want control, I want knowledge, I want recognition, I want to be more enlightened, I want to feel good, I want to feel better than others, I want to feel high, I want to feel powerful, you know? Don't fall into delusions of grandeur. In the beginning, awakening is not a sweet taste. It's a bitter pill of medicine to swallow. The sweetness comes after many years, but if you're greedy for that sweetness, it will not be given to you. So awakening is not a grand sensationalist sensation. Awakening is not imagining yourself to be a particular way and then taking action to follow fantasies in the mind. Awakening is not believing you are doing good or bad or that you are good or bad. Awakening is not measured by how many meditations you do, or how long you do them. And let, frankly, let shame be on us if we do not understand that awakening is not about what you wear, what you eat, how much money you have, or how many followers you have. Really, let a deep sense of shame and remorse be in those who have lost themselves in those foolish beliefs and false superficial ways of thinking, leading others to also believe that's how we should live, about how strong our physical body is, or what diet we should take, or how much money we have, or that the more spiritual that we are, the more money we have. This is false, completely. Let us all equally see for ourselves who we really are, and what the hell we are doing in our life and with our life. What we are thinking, what we are saying, what we are feeling about ourselves and others and about our life and about this planet in which we live. Our reality is created with our thoughts, yet we do not see our thoughts clearly. We do not see our reality. We think we do, but we do not. Whether spiritual ideas, religious ideas, political ideas, scientific dogma, personal opinions, or whatever, those are the gross psychic material lodged in the mind that blocks our veils of perception. Let us all take responsibility and wake up and 
give up our vices of psychosis. Let us stop dreaming about our life, about our life story, and wake up here and now, every damn moment of our lives, as if it's the last moment we will ever live. Because to not live like that, to not live in that awareness of our actual reality, in our being here and now, is to already be dead. You are, we are, spiritually dead if you are not here in this moment, breathing with the being and conversing with our inner consciousness. A sleeping life is a meaningless life. It's useless. People might say, oh, but it's part of your path to make mistakes. Yeah, okay. How many lives will we do that for? Repeating the same mistakes. 10 lives, 50 lives, 100 lives, 10,000 years of reincarnations in the cycle of samsara? Where has our sense of urgency gone? Do we not see what state we are in? To call ourselves foolish and idiots and criminals is an understatement. We may not be in a physical prison and we may not be considered criminals of society, if you can even call it society, but we certainly are criminals of this cosmos. And as a species, we do not live in alignment with how we are supposed to live. Far, far, far from it. If you really want to see the reality of what I'm saying, you must struggle against and surrender the idiocies of the mind and realize what is important in every dimension of your life. Spiritual universal truth is not separate from your local neighborhood road, the house you live in, the family you live with, your religion, your new age beliefs, your workplace, scrolling through social media, the news you watch, the people sat in pubs and clubs, spiritual universal truth is not separate from any domain of life. So if you want to see the reality of what I'm pointing to, you have to revolutionize the mind and drop all illusions in a radical way. It's not a trying, it's a radical effort. A lot of people ask, how do I stop thinking this or that or give up this or that addiction? And how do I really change? Sometimes I try, but I can't really be bothered. Well, you lack a sense of urgency, this urgency to change and also lacking a real love for the truth. Or perhaps first, a real love and recognition of the truth, and then the devotion, the willingness to walk in that truth and take action in it. So if you're asking this question, some part of you, within you, has not looked honestly and objectively enough at the life you are choosing to live and the way you're choosing to live it. It doesn't matter if those choices are subconscious or conscious. It's you, it's your choice, and you have to start taking responsibility. And for this, it's much better to live your life as if you're about to die, because death is never far away. And spiritually, we are already dead. It's not any coincidence that zombie movies and video games have all been created in the past decade. Because we are that. We just don't see it. We are zombies living in a mass psychosis. And just one of the reasons we are that, we are this mass zombie apocalypse, is because we take life for granted. And the medicine to balance out that greed and ungratefulness for life is death, the other side of life, the other force that we all are scared of. You see anyone in their last moments of life, how their life flashes before their eyes in pain and bitterness and finally waking up to the foolery and mistakes they made in their life. That is the power of death 
and transformation. Live with death by your side so that he may wake you up, shake his hand every day and tell him you ain't dying today. Every morning, take life by the, the gonads and tell it you aren't sleeping today. Wake up that you actually, actually want to wake up, that you want to die to yourself every moment and kill all of your stupidities that stop you from living the way you're meant to live in your heart. Free from fear, free from cowardice, free from vice. Every morning, say these three things. I do not know. I know nothing. I am nothing. We all have our challenges and obstacles. Each one of us has our spiritual purpose, our great work within ourselves, the path we are meant to walk. It's the real homework given to us from divinity to finish and do. The path is there, it's difficult, but you have to at least be able to see it, complete and utter woe to those people who do not see their afflictions, who do not see their sins, their errors, complete and utter blindness most of us live in, understand that real spirituality is not symbolized by a weak person who's turned their back on their problems, a coward who's afraid of confrontation with himself afraid of looking in the mirror of the soul, of the consciousness. Real spirituality is an inner revolution of spiritual warfare. The ego is the enemy, the prize is the soul. Do you want to save your distressed damsel soul at the top of your castle and slay the demons to get there? Or do you want to retreat to a cave and suck your thumb, self-soothing the poor little ego me, right? feeling sorry for yourself and self-pity because of things that happened in the past. Let go of the past. It's not real. It doesn't exist. It only exists in the mind. Awakening is not for scared, fearful people not willing to surrender their vanities to the higher forces that lie within themselves. Materialistic, atheistic people believe that they have to control everything in their life and they go around like maniacs in a permanent state of distress and dis-ease and confusion. And we wonder why mental and physical sickness is an epidemic. Materialism is the epidemic. Intellectualism is an epidemic. It's obviously clear that there will be many, many more diseases and epidemics to come in the future because we make them. They are manifested from the disease, the diseased collective epidemic state of our consciousness of humanity. So look at the state of humanity, really look at it. Look at us, how foolish it is to think we are evolving. We are in a devolution. The false dogma of evolution is a delusion. We've been fed by ignorant people. We are so degenerated and just such degenerates, yet we feel no remorse or no shame for it. And we spend too much time on social media laughing like drunkards on memes and jokes, like life is just one big joke and nothing serious. And I'm sorry to say it, but most of us, I do believe, and from what I've seen and understand, most of us are beyond saving. That's the harsh reality of the truth. If you don't like it, well, go drink your sweet honey, drinks of illusion somewhere else. You'll feel cozy and comfortable for a while until the drink starts turning sour again and then you start searching spiritual things on the internet to give you an, more, more of a sense of comfort, you know? Always, always greedy for more comfort, more security, anything to take away the bitter reality of ignorance. That's what we do. 
right, will never stop being in a self-serving, unconscious psychosis until we realize that we are in a self-serving, unconscious psychosis. The amount of foolish comments I see where people think they know it all because of a dogmatic, false sense of self-servingness. Forget the theories and what you believe. What you believe and what you stand for and what you identify with makes no difference to real spiritual awakening. The only thing that matters in awakening is here and now in this moment and staying with that no matter what. Throw out the useless garbage produced by the clinginess of the mind and only keep what is practical and useful to breathe and create more space and more consciousness in your life. Yes, there are books. Yes, there are practices. But if you do not know how to live from moment to moment, you will never even pick up those books or do those practices or stay consistent at all. We are in a mass psychosis, a mass epidemic. And let me tell you, it's getting accelerating worse. The worse it gets, the more you have to fight the more you need this sense of urgency for the soul, an inner revolution, a psychological revolution, a great rebellion against our own degeneracy, against our own drunkenness. When you let the mind sober up out of its delusions and fascinations and fantasies and let it be pure and still and natural, it's like a clear-cut diamond in the mind and its sound is of birds. This is clarity, sobriety, the opposite of this drunkenness, of being controlled by unconscious impulses. Sobriety is a power and a force that we should befriend always on this path. It washes the mind with its fragrance of clear light. And it helps us to see past our doors of perception. So, sober up. Stop identifying with life, with dreams, with psychosis. Get up, wake up, stop slouching and breathe. Wake up, wake up, wake up.